Hey guys, Tommy Mays here. Um, I've been so excited to hear about the classic release at uh, BlizzCon. I think that's a huge step for Blizzard. It's going to tie in a lot of uh, old old time gamers, new time gamers. It's going to create a whole different thing. Um, yeah, I'm. <laughs> I can't even begin to tell you how excited I am about it. So, uh, just a little recap. My name is Tommy Mays. I've been a guild leader for a successful guild on private servers for the last five or six years now. Uh, and along the way, I've picked up some things. I've learned a little bit over here about how to not be in a guild, how some guilds don't do it so right. And then in my own guild, I've made a lot of mistakes and I've had to learn all that over the time, uh, five years, six years. Uh, all of this has come to this sort of uh, precipice, I guess you could call it, where you know, now that I know so much about leading the guilds, I've been through it all, I can actually come forward and I can say, hey, you know, for those of you who want to lead a guild, for those of you who have been in a guild or officers or, you know, whatever have you, I can sit down and I can make something like this where I can share a little bit about what I've learned along the way and hopefully you won't have to make the same mistakes that I have because they have been a little bit on the painful side. Uh, so let's let's just dive right in. I made a whole PowerPoint presentation uh, about how to lead a guild. It's basically very basic. So if you you know if you've been a guild leader for a while, you probably have already run into this. Uh, for new players who are coming in to WoW Classic, this might be something just to consider because it's a totally different animal than retail WoW now. Uh, so let's get into it. This is just a simple commentary on how to create, build, and lead a guild in Classic and Vanilla WoW. All right, so going through the contents, we're going to go through creating guild, recruiting for the guild, managing the guild, loot structures for the guild, leadership styles, and then we're going to do a quick review and kind of a summary at the end. I hope this doesn't take too long. Um, I'm pretty excited about where, where it's going to go, and chances are I'll do a lot more elaborations in different videos, but just for the sake of keeping it short and sweet, I'm just going to try and do this as fast as possible. All right, so Vanilla WoW, same as uh, same as WoW now, two ra two factions to choose from. You get the Alliance or the Horde, whichever one you really want to go for. Basically, like Coke and Pepsi, with a little bit of a twist. As one side has shamans, the other side has paladins. You don't have either. So you know, if you like paladins, that's great. If you like shamans, go for it. Have fun. Uh, there's a little bit of a racial thing, but it, it's it's big because paladins and shamans are like night and day. It changes PvP. It changes rating. It changes. I mean, without one, you really forget get what it's like. Okay, so the reasons for the guild in pre-BC, vanilla, or classic WoW. You re it's needed, it's required for every single content thing you want to do in late game. If you want to raid BWL, you want to raid uh, AQ, you want to raid Nax, you need a guild because chances are pugs aren't going to be able to do it, at least for the first part of it. Um, it's an organized group for te of a team to get you epics, or at least the guild epics, every week. It's a social hub to network and make friends that play WoW, so you already have a similar interest, go for it. Uh, one of my favorite reasons for the guild is the pooled resources for a common purpose because you have people that are doing all kinds of farming, all kinds of uh, professions. You, you basically come together with this this wealth of information, knowledge, uh, useful things on the server, whether it's mining, engineering, tailoring, uh, herbalism, alchemy, whatever. You, you, you pool it all in one guild and you can have access to it whenever you need it. Uh, so creating a guild. Let's start with you. Why do you want to lead a guild? Who are you as a person? What is your short-term and long-term goal about making a guild? And what is it that you can really offer to this guild? Like, what is it that you can invest in this guild that will make it successful? Uh, you want to use yourself as a template. So find out what you can offer and use that to recruit people for your guild. Uh, do you want to raid two nights a week, five nights a week? I mean, this is this is all about you. So you got to start with you as the very center, the nucleus, so to speak, and bring a few friends around that creates the officer core, and then keep on going from there. Um, do you want a highly competitive guild, a server-first guild, or a casually-paced guild that's just having fun? So the atmosphere that you are most comfortable in is the atmosphere that you want to make in the guild. And use these core beliefs, that the things that you know about you, that you have about you, and make the guild for you. Because chances are, if you have at least one friend or one common set of ideas, you can have a whole guild behind you that has the same values, the same shared interests. Um, yeah. And let's go your circle. Who do you know? 
uh, who, who in your circle do you know? Who, who has strengths and who has weaknesses that can be uh, good with you and who has some strengths that you don't even know about? You know, who wants to create a guild? Ta start here. Who of your friends wants to make a guild? Uh, and you got to do this because you you got to sit down and figure this out, iron out these details before you even start recruiting. Because who's raid leading? Who's handling recruiting? Who's handling administration? If you're doing DKP, who's doing that? All of these things are going to come up, and it's better to just get it done and out of the way early on. Um, so it, it's all going to come up later. So just do it now. Uh, let's go over on to uh, to recruiting. Okay. So recruiting is one of my favorite things. It's actually the passion I have in World of Warcraft and in, in, in the classic scene. Um, you start with who you are, what you want in your guild, and you you broadcast who you are and what you want in the form of a recruiting message. And homophily, it's called the homophily effect. And homophily means like the same, love of the same, birds of a feather, all of that. The, the tendency of individuals to want to associate and create bonds with similar people or like-minded people as them. That's really it. So you want to recruit people who may be like you. Uh, find out what you enjoy doing in WoW and appeal to the people with a similar interest. Unless you're a very exotic and eccentric, weird niche person, you're going to find at least 20 people who like the game for the same reasons that you do. Um, you want to avoid using words that make you blend in with other guilds. You want to promote your guild a little bit differently and stand out because that's the most important thing. Otherwise, you're just going to get swept right out of the way with all the recruitments, all the all everything. People are going to want to join the guild that has flavor that 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 they believe has similar interests to them. You know, if you want to be in a in a server first guild, chances are you're going to look for the server first guild. It's it's, it's just how it is. All right, so we're going to go through a few examples of what to do and what not to do. So starting out with the examples of what not to do. Uh, I'm just going to use an example. When I first started playing Vanilla WoW when I was like 16, this was a guild on my server. It was called Heavy Hitters. So Heavy Hitters is recruiting healers, warlocks, and other exceptional players. And I'm highlighting this in red. We'll go over it after I finish this. Uh, we raid Monday through Thursday at 7.30 time. We use DKP in our currently Molten Core 10 of 10, Anixia 1 of 1, and BWL 5 of 8. Message me for an invite. So let's kind of take this apart a little bit. Uh, this gives you the information about the guild, but it has no real emotion about the guild. It doesn't tell you who the guild is. And guilds are kind of an emotional thing. I, as much as you might want to disagree, it is. It, it, like there's this weird emotional bond that we have about social things. So uh, you, you want to you wanna message people and give them a message about who you are. It, it leaves the guild feeling sterile if it's just, you know, weird and like that. So... Example, we're going to go through the red, the red, exceptional players. Okay, so if you're looking for exceptional players, chances are you're not an exceptional player. You're, you're, you're just a player who's looking to be carried, or if you're saying that, I mean, for an exceptional player, it's like, oh, I don't want to deal with any of that. That, that looks needy. So you want to, you want to talk to people who are, who are like-minded. Um, when you say we're Molten Core 10 of 10, Anixia 1 of 1, and BWL 5 of 8, chances are that you want to just report the the highest level of progression so just get that out of there because it leaves this you know weird like we've done so much but not really kind of feeling and then for the for the last one message me for an invite that's kind of a this is kind of a desperate plea like please please message me i need you to join my guild um if people are talking to you about your guild it means they're paying attention so you know, if they if they look at this and they message you, they don't know what you really want, and they're going to waste your time eventually. That's just kind of the, the, the bottom line of this. So let's go with a, a, an example of what to do. All right, Heavy Hitters is recruiting iron-lunged alpha males to join the pack. We blaze through B eight, uh, 5 of 8 BWL, and we roll dub Molten Core, where we chill Monday through Thursday night at 7.30 server, high as... If you want to sit back and blaze with a, four, with a bunch of 420-friendly guild that kills... We need healers, warlocks most. So let's let's go through the green here. Iron lung alpha males. People who think they're iron lunged alpha males, and you're talking about that as sort of a, a call. You know, people who believe the same as you, people who think the same as you. That's who you're 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 talking to right now. To join the pack, you're talking about you have a, a, a strong group of people who who have similar ideas, similar beliefs. They're they're part of a pack. It's a, there's a strict hierarchy involved, but it, it's a it's a firm thing that's going to get things done. They're going to go hunt and they're going to go get the kill. Uh, we blaze. Okay, so you're talking about a 420 friendly guild here. If you're not 420 friendly this guild isn't going to appeal to you like for me mm, i don't want to do that but you know what for some people it's a big deal that's who you're recruiting to so that's who you're talking to so that's the whole point of recruiting is you want to talk to the people who want are like you or who you want in the guild that's the 
best thing, the best case scenario is, and you want to make people laugh. You want to give them a sense of feeling in the thing. You want to, you know, oh, you can become a little bit more emotionally invested if something can draw out an emotion in you. If it's happiness, if it's sadness, if it's, you know, giddiness, if it's sarcasm, like whatever you feel most attracted to, you're going to look for that in a guild. And people are going to look that for that in your guild. So if you want a bunch of sarcastic assholes in your guild, you're going to get it, man. Just go for it. Just be sarcastic. All right. So be honest about your goals. This is going to save you so much time in the long run. You want to tell people who you are, what you want in the guild, and be unapologetic about it. You know, don't, it avoids confusion, confusion and misinterpretation. Just go for it. Just tell them who you are and what you want. Uh, some people are looking to be the best. They, they're looking to feed their egos. Some people just don't like the silly mistakes or they just want to be around more experienced players. And some folks just want to be in a social guild that just hangs out and talks to each other. I mean, if that's what you want, that's what you're going to go for. So find the right fit for everyone. Not everyone is going to be a good fit for your guild. So doing this will ensure less problems later on for the guild. You know, oh, I have these uh, ideas that uh, you guys were wanting to be this. And uh, no, just get rid of all of that. Tell them honesty. Mm, mm, mm. This is what we are. This is what we want. This is where we're going. Boom. No more confusion. No more misunderstandings. And this is the goal. If people are on board, they're on board, and they're going to go. So let's go. Uh, let's just kind of hurry this up. Let's go to managing and leading. All right. The art of balance. All right. Making a guild, keeping the ball rolling. This is something that took me a long time to really understand. Um, it took me, I mean, I kind of realized it when I was in a guild, but I didn't really understand the, the importance of it when you're actually leading the thing or you're, you're part of it or, you know, you're, you're, you're the officer or the guild leader, whatever it is, you, this is something that's so important. So morale, it's one of the, the most important thing I can possibly ever impart to you guys. Leading the, keeping the morale strong is the most important thing you can do. Always make sure you keep your morale strong. And I really cannot stress this enough. You want to deal with drama quickly before it becomes a problem. You want to handle things fairly because you don't give the, the piece of gear to the person who's your friend or trying to impress. I mean, so many of your problems just arise because of this. So make sure that things happen on a timely manner. Nothing breaks a guild's momentum or attention or morale like sitting down and waiting for something. If you're waiting for over 20 minutes, you're waiting way too much. People get frustrated, frustrated and bored. People lead to drama. Drama leads to problems. Problems lead to the dark side. Okay, so be efficient, be concise, be, be there. That's the most important thing. Okay, so keeping the ball rolling. Mistake happen be cool uh, sometimes you need to tell people that they're doing something wrong do it off to the side don't do and blame games in front of everybody this is just going to create more problems you know nobody wants to hear an officer flame some guy for 20 minutes while they're you know everybody's just standing around doing nothing so once you do this talk you talk to them about it in a much more private setting if you can't seem to get it you need to <coughs> sorry you need to remove them quietly off to the side um, you want to realize that you're setting a precedent. Anytime you do something in raid or an officer chat, or you're, you're setting a precedent. So you're, when you're talking to the group of people, if you start treating somebody poorly or treating them a certain way, chances are people are going to do it because they see, you know, the guy up top doing it. It's okay for them to do that too. So if you like, you know, sarcastically pick on somebody in the raiding environment, chances are they're going to want to do that too, and they're going to do it. So it becomes socially acceptable. Uh, let's move on to loot structure. It's a big issue, so let's go into it really quick. Uh, for those of you who don't know, DKP is Dragon Kill Points. You get points for killing bosses, for raid attendants, for sitting off on the side, just you know, running around collecting stuff, as long as you're there. Uh, there's a point cost for an item, and you bid for it, or you just buy it outright. Um, hybrid is a mix between Loot Council and DKP, and this is a little bit harder for me to, to go into, but we'll still try it out anyway. And Loot Council is about three to five people deciding what where loot goes, uh, given items that will be beneficial to the guild, receiving items that are good for your class. This is this is where the the sort of like the balance is, and DKP can do this too, but there's just a whole dance. It becomes more hybrid at that point. Okay, so let's go for, through a few pros and cons with DKP. High majority of, pay, of players favor DKP. Uh, it alleviates officer interaction with the loot distribution. Prov provides a I want to do air quotes here. Fair place for people to spend DKP on items they want. And on the con side, problems of hoarding it, hoarding DKP. It reduces items players get for progress. And I'll give you a little bit of an example. Let's say you you're a DPS warrior. You know you've been saving DKP since Molten Core. Your gear is absolute shit. Like you are just like the rock bottom, the greenest of goblins. You're looking at, and you have enough DKP that when you kill Neff, the Somehow your guild gets up that way. You kill Neff, Ash Condi drops, and now you're the the Valor Warrior with Ash Condi. You're a joke. It's not funny. You're not gonna do much. I mean, you have a good weapon, but you don't have any gear to back it up. So it, it you know it, it creates weird problems. Um, 
And because of this, you know, people will hoard DKP and they won't pick up items that will be a benefit because they're going for the high ticket items. So, and it also can create a bid war. And this is a, another problem too, is, you know, you might have an item that costs 25 DKP, but people are going crazy for it because it's one of the biggest ti uh, ticket items. So you go into these bid wars. This also takes time, by the way, out of your, your killing experience. And, you know, people are going up 60, 80, 100, 150, 120, 200. I mean, they'll, they'll throw so much DKP at an item that they won't even have a DKP for another set of items that them might really benefit them, but they're just going for the the, the most wanted or the high, uh, rarest r rarest drop or whatever have you. Uh, let's go to loot council. Pros. Uh, officers, uh, this offers the leadership the ability to give items to players who need it. So you're going to look at the biggest upgrade in this situation. It gives leadership a much more hands-on approach. So if this is you, you, loot council might be a better option for you. You want a hands-on approach. You want to drive, you want to be the driver here. Um, it's the best loot distribution system for a, a progression guild. You know, you're putting items where they need to go so the guild as a whole moves forward. Uh, the cons is highly susceptible to officer career. You can look at this and be like, hmm, that's mine as an officer. And if the guild doesn't like it, who cares? So, you know, you can give yourself items that you don't even need that won't even benefit you, but you just want it because you're the officer. Uh, can create problems where people feel like they're the guild favorite or, you know, that person's the guild favorite and favoritism is not fun. So if you keep giving items to one guy, everybody's looking at him like, oh man, they get a little jealous and they get a little weird and it causes drama and drama again leads to the dark side. So stay away from drama. Uh, officers can pass loot to people who may not benefit them the most. And this is part of the double-edged sword system of pros and cons. You know, you have, uh, on one hand, loot, loot, uh, loot council can give it to the best person or the very worst person, it, depending on not who the, who the loot council is and how experienced they are in the game and their understanding of class mechanics. All right, let's go to the hybrid. Uh, this is harder for me to identify because it generally takes a little bit of both. So you have like 20%, uh, 2080 or 80, 20, 70, 30, 30, 70, all that. So only, I'll give you an example. Only warriors and rogues can bid on this piece of items or only these two ro ro warriors and one rogue can bid on it. So you're kind of using a point system, but it might not be DKP. It might be something else, you know, who knows. But you're, you're also, uh, loot council is encouraging um, these people to get this item. So it's a good thing for, for progression as well. Um, this is also can be really tailored for your for your guild needs and your leadership style. So it, you know it's, it's not a bad thing. So you might want to consider this one too. And let's go into leadership styles real quick because we are running out of time. So leadership styles, this requires hard choices. And this goes back to the, to the age old question, is it better to be liked or is it better to be respected? Um, this ties into your guild structure, your identity, the rules of the guild, the public image of the guild. I mean, you name it, this is gonna come into play. Um, so the real question is, oops, what leadership style do you have? Leadership styles do matter because personalities are at play here. So let's let's keep that in mind. Funny guild officers can be really encouraging, be the inspiration, be the joke. And I, I usually fall into the funny uh, officer category. Um, serious guild officers can be highly effective. They encourage perfection and they give a strong sense of purpose for people. You know, you, you want to be, you know, in that serious mindset, that focused mindset and get things done. So that's a really important thing to have in a guild. You, you do need a balance. Um, imposing guild officers can be the, the effective motivators. They can create a, cli a climate of extreme rigidity, a fear of loss. People want to please them. So this is good. I mean, it's not a bad thing. People want to please them and they don't want to piss them off because if they piss them off, the chances are they're not, they're going to get kicked out of the raid. They're going to get out of, kicked out of the guild. And and so they really want to impress. So that you know, it does create kind of a nice thing because everybody's trying super hard. All right. So let's go through a quick summary, quick review, all of that, and we're going to be done here. So morale is the most important thing any guild can can have, and you want to guard this really well. It's a it's a really just keep it close. Uh, keeping your people inspired, engaged, and coming to the raids every week is one of the hardest things you can do in vanilla. I can't stress that enough because sometimes, man, it is just such a bother to go. So most vanilla guilds never really stop recruiting because there's high turnover. This is this is just part of it. You never like get out of this recruiting mindset. You, you might tone it down. You might slow down. You might only accept a few people, but you never truly stop recruiting because so many people leave or life happens or this happens you know there's always something that's going to come up so you want to with that in mind you want to create an atmosphere where people want to come back no one wants to farm molten core for months thank you nostarius but no thank you i don't want to do that nobody wants to farm molten core with bad loot for months they keep coming for the feeling it gives them it's a it's, a, it's an emotional thing again you're coming here because you're addicted to wow you're coming here because you want to escape your problems you want you're coming here to be with friends whatever it is you're coming here and it's, there's an emotional reason behind it and so 
people will do what they want. And if they don't want to go to Molten Core because it's a problem, if they don't want to go to BWO because it's a white vest, they don't want to do this, you're going to have to keep recruiting. So keep it lively, keep it fun. People will want to come back and you won't have to recruit so much. All right, creating incentives. Um, you can give DPS gold incentives to do better in raids, but you also need good tanks for that. Uh, you need to find out where your, your guild is. You want to create internal competitions. You want to create situations where people have to have some fun together while being in the guild. This is like events and, and social things. Uh, and again, seasonal settings, casual fun. Create create events that people will want to come to, have a good time. You know, If it's an off-raid day, you know people are going to be on. They might not all be on, but you can have some fun while you're there. And it, create, it does create bonds. I mean, the closer you are with your guild members, the better it is so foster it fosters bonds in the guilds it gives people a reason to engage you understand a little bit more about people what their professions are maybe you can do some trades like offer lower rates whatever it is and then we're going to go to the golden rule okay before you do anything in the guild always ask yourself one simple question how does this benefit the guild if you're always asking this question and you're always trying to benefit the guild, you're not going to go far straight. You're going to make mistakes. Your problems are going to happen. But your your heart is in the right place. You're always trying to do better for the guild. And this is a great place to be. We all make mistakes. We all learn from them. So I, you know, I wish you the best of luck. I hope your guilds are successful. And I hope you have a great time. Thanks for watching.